Richard and Prue Post. We're located just east of Gyra. Property name is Outer Bald Blair. We run uh, three enterprises here, all around 10,000 DSE each. We run a seed stock Angus herd, the output of which is bulls for our own use in our one property sale where we sell about 150 bulls a year. We run a commercial cattle herd, taking our progeny ideally through to feeder weights. And we also have a prime lamb enterprise where we take those progeny through to kill weights. And we have uh, three to four full-time employees in addition to my wife, Prue and I. And we run our enterprise on largely highly improved country. A big focus for us post the 2019 drought was to learn and get better at managing our pasture. One of the things that we needed to get involved in to do that was to upskill our employees and ourselves to learn how to pasture measure and then learn how to pasture budget. I would say that it is a wonderful opportunity and we thank the Future Drought Fund. It's given us the tools to manage dry periods as they evolve in advance of their arrival. When we have a team of people who are all taking pasture measurements, the integrity to that data is for us to be measuring the same thing regardless of which member of our team is looking at it. So from that point of view, when I heard it was group-based learning, on-farm, practical, so that I could take all of our employees along for the ride as well. It allowed us in a group setting to go from very little knowledge to great knowledge, benchmarking our measurements against other members of people in our group and in our area. It was the key thing that got me over the line to become involved and I uh, couldn't speak more highly as to how that's actually played out for the outcomes that we're trying to achieve. I'd say it just opened up our minds to speaking the language of pasture measurement and pasture budgeting that comes from that. My team now speak in numbers when they measure pasture as a result of this program. Now we speak in kilos per hectare, we speak in uneven graze or a good graze. We've learnt over the past 18 months, two years, what is a good level to leave a paddock at. The basic skills that we've learnt have morphed into things that we probably didn't even think of at the time, but all of which are contributing to a really positive outcome for us on farm in terms of getting the data that allows us to match how much grass we've got at various times of the year and to match our stocking rate to it. So we've learnt a lot from that group setting uh, and thought about things that we may not have come across ourselves. So it's that sort of collaborative learning when you're all like-minded heading in the right direction. There's real strength in numbers from people running different enterprises to ours, even though they're quite similar. The environments can be quite different even in a small local area. So from that point of view, it's just facilitated a faster learning speed, I would say, by doing it in that group setting and visiting farms. The project has helped us prepare for both last year's season and this year's season in a really powerful way. Ag 360 has been a wonderful tool for us in terms of looking forward and projecting what we think the season's going to be like. And if I look at calendar 2023, Ag 360 was always well in advance predicting a below average rainfall pattern through until the end of calendar 2023. And it was predicting that from early on in the year. We had used that as a key tool as to how we would set our business up for that drive environment. So we actually made some early destocking calls to try and match that lower rainfall period through our winter months and into spring. That's exactly how it played out. We know from the program what levels of pasture is good to leave when we take stock out of a paddock for it to recover in the fastest fashion than to the best quality that it can. That's been one of the key learnings from the program. Ground cover is paramount as we run our operation and for the health of our ecosystem. So we aim for 100% ground cover all the time. And the one key common denominator as to the difference in ecosystems is ground cover at all times. It's given us the tools to manage dry periods as they evolve in advance of their arrival. And for that, we have strengthened our business case. We've now have the skills to better manage our ecosystems and our environment. And it all ties in well to sustainability, which for me is defined as the ability of future generations to farm here in a profitable manner. And I would say that this is key to that sustainability from my point of view. And of all the drought funding that we've been fortunate enough 
to participate in. It's been probably one of the most powerful and one of the ones that really sets us up to the best degree for future dry periods and droughts.